This is the plaintiff, Lakia Franklin. She says she purchased a car from the defendant, and when she got it home, the check engine light came on. Turns out the guy unloaded a car on her that needs a new transmission and a new hybrid battery to the tune of $5,000. The defendant refuses to take the car back. He refuses to pay for the repairs, and she refuses to just walk away from this rip-off artist without a fight. So she's suing for the $5,000 she's now owed. This is the defendant, James Waller. He says he did the plaintiff a favor and took her to an auto wholesaler. The woman looked at a few cars and picked the one she bought. She put cheap gas into it. Because it's a hybrid, it needs premium. That's why the check engine light came on. Then, two weeks later, she goes crazy claiming it needs a new transmission. His mechanic looked the car over. All it needs is a tune-up, and he's not refunding anybody anything. He's accused of unloading a clunker. All parties, please hit your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant and the check engine light went on immediately. And the defendant says, she put cheap gas in the junker, so tough. It's the case of my car is irregular. Thank you, Douglas. Lakia Franklin, you're suing James Waller for five grand. You say you're out actually more than that because according to you, he sold you a lemon. What happened here? I was recommended to him and, you know, because I knew him, I went to him, told him, you know, a situation I was having with my previous car, and he told me he has two cars that's available. And I said, okay, you know, how much do you want for him? He said one was 1400 and the other was 12. Now, are these cars that he owned, or he took you to a wholesaler, or what happened there? He said that he was the dealer and that they were his cars. Okay. And he was selling them. He was going to give them to me good price because going through him, it would be a whole lot cheaper. Okay. So I did so. All right. So you, you know, picked out your car. Yes. He, and what you picked out a 2500 Accord Hybrid for 1400 Yes. Okay. And um, when I met him, the first car that he showed me, it, he said it was a $50 pin that was missing out of the clutch. So I said, okay, well, no, I won't take this one. I said, what's wrong with the hybrid? He said, it's nothing wrong with this. It. Perfectly fine. You just need, you know, the regular tune up and stuff like that. I said, okay. Did you, you know. have a mechanic come and look at it to make sure that it was up to par? No, he had a mechanic on site. He. I don't, I don't want to know what he did. I'm asking, did you? No, I did not. Were the one buying the car have a mechanic take a look no, at I it? No, I did not. Okay, go on. I looked at the car. I started it up. It needed gas in it. And I said, are you sure? He said, yes, there's nothing wrong with the car. He said, if, you know, if anything's wrong with it, I'll fix it. I said, okay. Did um, he put that in writing, that warranty you just mentioned? No, he didn't. Because this is a 13-year-old car, mm -hmm. so somebody saying if there's anything wrong with a 13-year-old car, I'll fix it. That's really important to be able to prove. Did you tell her that if there's anything wrong with that 2500 Accord that you would pay to fix it? No, I did not. Yeah, yeah. watch out. That's what happens when you, yeah. you know, when you say <coughs> that you've got it. You better be able to prove you have that kind of an amazing warranty on a used car because it doesn't usually happen, I got to tell you. So anyway, you take the car home, and when do you start having problems? Um, to be honest with you, after I put the gas in it, I drove it maybe 20 minutes. Um, I told him, I said, you know, I really hope that I really didn't just buy a messed up car. And he said, no, the car is fine. He said, what kind of gas you put in? And I said, 89. He said, that's what made the check engine light come on. I said, okay. Where did you get the idea that... From mechanics, actually. I haven't asked the question yet. That a check engine light can come on by virtue of putting in the wrong octane gas. That's what I'm asking. Oh, from mechanics, ma'am. From having previous cars and me putting bad gas in my own cars. Okay, so go on, what happens? Okay, so I called him, but because we both was on the parkway leaving from Queens back to Long Island, he didn't answer me. And when I got the car to my house and he called me back, he said, oh, because you put 89 in it, so what do I have to do now? He said, drive it out. I said, okay. So, you know, I'm driving the gas out, I put 93 in it, the check engine light is also on. Okay, so how many days later is this? Maybe a day and a half. Okay. So, so you fill it with 93 and what? The check engine light was still on. Okay. So then that's when I called him and I told him, I said, the check engine light didn't go when off. When do you finally take it to a mechanic? I want to say that following maybe like Wednesday. Or how, how long after purchasing the car? Three, four days. And the mechanic tells you, oh, you shouldn't have bought this car. Right. They give right. me a report. They give me a... Um, okay. Let me see what the mechanic gave you. Yeah, okay, one. and this bill, is this a bill Sir? of sale? Yes, ma'am. And ma when was the bill of sale prepared? More than a week after she got the vehicle from me. 
And actually, I just assisted in her acquiring a vehicle. I took Who's her to A1H Auto Sales? That's not you? I'm an independent contractor under A1H. How do you make money on the 1400? I didn't make any money on her because Why I knew her. Why didn't you make money on her? So she buys a 13-year-old used car, and she doesn't get it checked out by a mechanic, uh, and it falls apart. Is she out of luck? Out of luck. Out of luck, period. Yeah, she's out of luck, yeah. Is there any way she could redeem herself? In? Yes, yes, I think so. Well, how? It depends to the local laws because they have that lemon law. That's what the judge is here for. But the lemon law doesn't apply because that's only for new cars. Yeah, it's bad for the business, so she can go around and badmouth them, but probably nothing he can do. Huh? Actually, there's a such thing as a lemon law, and you have either 30 days or... Not for this one. Not for this one. Nope. Going inside the courtroom. I knew her through a friend. So a friend referred her to me. Okay, and why and are you writing in the amount of $500? Because what I explained to her was when I got the bill of sale, when I went to her job weeks after, I said, so that way they won't charge you a lot of money being you said you, you didn't have. You mean tax fraud. You mean like the rest of us have to put the right price and pay the full amount of the sales tax to the government. But you guys don't have well, to. Well, I try. I, what I did was I, you, What you did was fraud. Yes, ma'am. I didn't do it intentionally. Well, don't look, don't put that face. You know you <laughs> no. bought a car that was cost more than five hundred. I don't. Double. Yes, judge. It's fraud. <laughs> it's out and out fraud. Yeah. Yes, All right. No. Yana, stop. So, no, just okay. stop. Stop. All right. Now, do you deny that the problems were in the first week? Um, actually, there, I sent a mechanic. She came to my job getting irate, cursing me out of my job. I didn't. How many days after the sale? This is more than a week after it because okay. she kept... So hold on. So according to you, she wasn't having problems in the first week. She didn't say transmission. She didn't say engine problems. What she said to me was... Engine light. She said, check engine light. So I said, okay. let a mechanic go. It's an older car. So why are you signing a bill of sale that says as is condition a week later if you're so mm -hmm. unhappy? I didn't... I, that was one... It was two papers. Mine that I gave to DMV said the 1400 on it. It couldn't have, Yana. Yes, it couldn't have. Because th this Yana, is only done for your have. benefit. No, 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 no. I, I, I don't, I really don't. Just listen to my question. Why did you sign a bill of sale a week later if you had problems in the first three days? I, one would think you wouldn't be signing this a week later. You would say, I, ha, ha, you never, a, you never gave me something in writing and I'm not signing it. Why are you signing it if you had transmission problems in the first week? Did he give you a bill of sale on the day that you bought the car? They gave, he just gave me the um, paper right. from... When she walked away with that Honda Accord, she had the title with that reassignment. But no fit. bill of sale. No bill of sale and Why no not? reassignment. Right. I didn't have it in my possession. And I told her, I said... Well, you don't carry those blanks in your hand? In your, in your well, hand? I didn't have it in my, my possession. All I right. left my shop. Whether he had this in writing or not that you agreed as is, the default... I need you to look at me. The default position, if, there, if it was a verbal car sale, mm -hmm. okay, the default position is there is no warranty. It's an as-is sale. Okay, so why is it then? Do you understand what that means? Yes, or you, Your Honor, what I'm Okay, what does as is mean? Do you know? As is is whatever's wrong with the car. Okay, so if you have no warranties in writing, that's what you got. You got an as is sale on a used car. So why would he have to not only return the 1400 but pay for a new hybrid battery to the tune of $2,698? and pay for a new transmission to the tune of $3,387. She's still driving the car. Yeah. Why would that happen? Why would I make him do that? But when I signed, when I, when I signed it, I signed this, the mileage of 1733 That wasn't the mileage on the car. The car and the mileage, he told me it was in kilometers, and come to find out, it's not in kilometers. Like, and I do not recall that paper that you're talking about. And your point is what about the mileage? It's wrong. What's he, wrong? The mileage that he put on the paperwork. It was wrong. Uh, because what? How do, you, how do you know that it's wrong? Because I took it to, to uh, Honda itself. Are you trying to tell me that Honda said, oh, that's a bunch of malarkey. It's yes. 270. Yes. Okay. Prove that. I, I only have that paper right there. No, I don't know Honda. what you got. Prove what, I just, what you just told me is the truth. What is this? This? How does this prove it? Where do you want me to look to see that? Because there's not one word about what you just said here. So, yeah. Verdict for the defendant. Appreciate you, Yana. Thank you. Well, the plaintiff stormed out of the courtroom. She's yeah. not here to talk. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel now? I Great. Mean, this is kind of crazy deal. That's a lot of miles on a car. Um, you know what? When you buy a used car and it says as is, that's what you get, as is. Read what you sign. Simple and plain. 
Uh, you don't think she understood that? Obviously, she didn't. Yeah. Did you cancel it with all those miles on it? Um, she knew that when she got the vehicle. She had a choice. I didn't twist her arm. She's asking for trouble, aren't you, though, with that many miles? No. She has an as-is car. Yeah, it's a used car. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Good enough. Okay. Congratulations. Harvey? Okay, Doug. Well, look. I mean, you know, we always talk about this, but you, you think if it's a used product, especially a really old one, that you can't get a warranty. It's as-is. That is not necessarily the case. You can always demand a warranty even if it's a used product. And if you don't like it and you want the warranty and they won't give it to you, walk away from the deal.